How's it going guys? It's Root Junkie here. In today's video we're going to be talking about Nexus devices. So this is actually my Nexus 6 and what I'm going to show you guys is how to deal with a bricked device here um, or, or a boot looping device is the best way to say it. A device that won't fully boot up an operating system and is stuck doing this forever. So if that's what you have, whether it's this device or any uh, Nexus device, I'm going to show you a way to um, kind of take care of that and get it functioning once again. Um, power and volume down to reboot the device and just keep holding it until you get into bootloader mode. So there's a couple things you can do from bootloader mode. One, if you're stuck in a boot loop, the first thing you always want to try is to go into stock Android recovery with volume down here and reboot to recovery, do a wipe data factor reset and then um, go ahead and uh, see if that fixes the boot loop um, and the bricked state or soft bricked state and that's that's a great method as well now if you are like me down here and you have a locked bootloader now if you have an unlocked bootloader obviously we can just reflash the firmware this isn't even an issue but because we have a locked bootloader here i know this is a relocked bootloader it says status code two instead of zero but it's a locked bootloader and we cannot unlock the bootloader again because it's locked there's no way to do that at this point but our device is still stuck in a boot loop maybe we rooted the device with king root and it caused a boot loop whatever the reason it's stuck and we're stuck in this boot loop a wipe data factor reset from stock recovery doesn't fix it i'm going to show you guys how to do this so first thing you're going to want to do is actually boot into recovery mode so we're going to go ahead and do that um, i'm assuming that recovery mode is available and obviously bootloader is also available so once you see this screen just hold volume up and then select power or hold power and then select volume up that's what it is and then up here at the very top of the screen you're actually going to see your build number. It actually gives you a couple things. It tells you Google, tells you Shamu, which is the code name of this device. It tells you your this device currently is on Android um, 6.10. And this is really going to work for devices that are not yet on NuGet. And you'll see why in a minute. Um, and then it gives you your build number. So we are currently on, looks like 3IE. 3IE is what it looks like. So once you've got that, um, you can scroll back down here and just go ahead and reboot to bootloader mode. Or actually, you know what? No, we're going to stay in this mode. Stay in recovery for right now. Make sure you have a decent battery charge before you start this process. But let's go to my computer and show you how we're going to fix this boot loop on the Nexus 6. Again, on you could do 5X, Nexus 9, a bunch of different devices. So you'll see. So let's go to my computer. So here you go, we are on the computer here, and what we're going to do is you're going to come over here, and this is the OTA images for Nexus devices. This is online, I'll give you a link to it in the video description. And you're going to scroll down to your device that is boot looping. So for me, I have the uh, Nexus 6, and I'm currently on this, this build right here, see, 3 one i said i but it's hard to see on my phone 31 e is currently what i'm on so what you want to do is you want to pick an, a nougat version that is above it so normally otas are are considered like um patching they always patch the files to update but all of the nougat firmware android 7.0 at least the first release is a full firmware package okay so we went ahead and downloaded that package i'm going to show it to you so here it is in my file system and I went ahead and downloaded it so this is the file so this is NuGet now if we open up that in 7-zip you can see here what is contained in this image so it has the boot image so we're getting a brand new boot image it's not patching that it get it, it updates the bootloader and all of its partitions so those are all brand new it updates the radios and that will all be brand new and it updates the system image and it's not patching the system image it's a full complete system image so if you had an unlocked bootloader you could flash all these partitions but OTA updates at least the all the Android NuGet the very first one for that for Android NuGet for each device is a full firmware package so we basically can flash a lock device and I'm gonna show you how alright so we have our firmware it's right there I'll put it over here again we're going to come into platform tools. So you're going to need to have ADB uh, fast boot stuff set up already on your device. If you don't have it, 
Um, let's go over here. We can go over here. Come over here. Click on this. And download ADB FastView files for Windows and extract them. And then just open up that folder that once it's extracted. Okay? That's the file you'll need. Uh, otherwise, you can install Android SDK, whatever you want. But you basically need to have these three files in your folder. So then in this folder, just hold shift on your keyboard, right click, open command window here. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and do some things on the phone itself. So over here in recovery, you've got your cable. Go ahead and plug in the cable to the device. Oh man, it's going to spin on me, I can tell already. Um, and then what you're going to do is you're going to scroll down until you, you highlight apply update from ADB or ADB update or whatever. Um, we call different things in different recovery systems, but normally it's apply ADB from up or update from ADB and go ahead and hit the power to start ADB sideload mode. All right, so we started it and it actually has some drivers that should be installing. You can see the things connected and we can test to make sure that ADB sideload mode is working by in our command window here typing a command. So we're going to go ahead and type in ADB devices. And it comes back and gives, if it's working correctly and you got all your things functioning, it should come back, say the serial number of the device, and should say sideload mode or sideload right here, okay? That means that the device is communicating in sideload mode and we can go ahead and sideload the OTA update image, which will get the device out of its boot looping state. So to do that, we're going to type in ADB sideload space. And then we're just going to drag the zip file, which is right here, drag the zip file into, into, into the uh, window here. So go ahead and click and hold it and then let go of it. And that drags the whole extension. So the command is ADB sideload and then the zip file, but it, it drags the location of the zip file also, which makes it sure it goes to the right place. So once you've got that in there, just go ahead on your keyboard, hit enter. And you're going to see what's going to happen is we actually get a little ticker here. Let's see what happens here. It says loading right here. And there it goes. See the little percentage right there? So this is going to take some time, but you'll have a little ticker there in your window to make sure it's going smoothly. And... And like I said, the reason that this functions, you can see down here on the device, there's some information too about verifying the update package. Um, the reason it functions is a couple fold. One, it functions because um, it's this, this update package is a newer version than what the device is currently on, so that's very important. And two, because the firmware update is a, a complete full firmware update, it's updating every basically every partition on the device it's basically the same as flashing firmware with an unlocked bootloader. Um, and that's why this will get your device restored even though you have a locked bootloader because these files are all signed and the recovery works and sees them as signed and everything functions. So at this point, um, it's gonna be probably 10 minutes. So I'm gonna skip until we're at the end and we can show you guys that the, the flash has, has finished and completed. So we're gonna come back when that's done. It might take a while to do this um, depending on your cable speeds and how big the big the files pretty big so you're looking at like oh shoot we can actually look down here and find out how big this file is let's let's take a look here and figure that out so you're at like about a gig so it's got to copy over that whole gig to the device to apply this update so it, it's gonna take some time so we'll come back to it so this is gonna be a quick check-in here at uh, well 49 basically 50% um, some things I wanted to point out for me. Uh, one, one, for some reason, sometimes when I connect my device up in ADB sideload mode, it takes forever to transfer data from the computer to the device. And as you can see, if you look at the timestamp and when I started or when I cut out a second ago when we were at 1%, it's been a long, long time. So the device over here has actually gone ahead and um, just started up doing the patching system images. So um, finally, all the, the files and the OTA update is on the device, and now it's actually applying the update. So from here, it should go you know, a little bit faster if you have really slow transfer speeds like I do for some reason. Sometimes I just got to restart and do it over, and the transfer speed's great. So I don't know what the deal is, but a um, little bit irritating. So anyway, um, so you can see how long it's been taking. You can see what percentage I'm at. You can see what's happening on the screen right here. 
um, where basically it validated it and now it's installing the update and it tells you what update it's installing and then it says it's passing system images unconditionally. Um, so uh, the other thing I want to point out, I was telling you that this is a full firmware package and one of the ways you can tell what is a full or not a full firmware package is generally the size. So here is two other uh, OTA update uh, zips right here. And you can see that they're you know 128 megabytes whereas this one's almost a gig. So when you have any firmware packages that's around a gig in size, that generally means it's a full firmware update. Um, and it's basically replacing everything. So it's just a good sign to look out for. All right, let's let this thing finish. All right, guys, as you can see, um, it has completed the process and what a pain in the neck. If it takes you like forever to do this, just restart and start over because this was ridiculous. It took like an hour to flash this thing and it really shouldn't. So something was going on with my USB, probably just restarting it would have fixed it, but I waited it out and you can see we're done here. Um, and so from here, we're just gonna come down here to um, volume down, actually no, that's actually where we wanna be. So reboot system now, and just go ahead and reboot once it has completed the process. So we're gonna reboot right now. I'm gonna go ahead and unplug my cable and we're actually done on the computer. So let's let this thing boot up. So here you go, this is first boot up of the Nexus 6. This should bring the device fully up to Android Nougat um, and fix the bootlipping problem we were having on this screen. Now, first boot ups normally take a little bit of time, so be patient um, for the boot up process to occur, um, and then you'll boot right into the device. Now, the cool thing about this, or the thing that's interesting about this is that if you have repaired a boot loop, there still could be data on the device. It, it didn't wipe the data unless you tried the you know factory reset before you did the boot loop repair. Um, and so if the data is still there, you might be able to save that if you know your password or if the device was password locked, um, you'd be able to get into it. So um, just be a little bit aware of that. You can see right here it says it's optimizing some applications, which actually is going pretty fast. So let's let it fully boot up. I mean, that's a good sign. Obviously, we can get to this point because before you were just boot looping with just those bouncing uh, little balls across there and um, the Google logo is all you were seeing. So this is a good sign that we are uh, getting there. All right, this should be it. And we should have success with the new Android version. So there we go, we'll swipe it up. I didn't have anything set up on this thing and I didn't wipe data factory set it. So that's why I got in so quickly. Um, and then we're just gonna go into settings really quickly and just show you, there it is. Android 7.1 or 0.0 I should say. And you are fully uh, fixed. You fixed the boot looping device here, the Nexus boot looping device, even with a locked bootloader. So that is the beauty of this process of using these OTA updates that include all of the firmware and using ADB sideload to fix a boot looping device that doesn't have a locked bootloader, an unlocked bootloader. So there you go, guys. That's going to wrap it up for the video. I hope you have enjoyed it. I hope this will be able to help you fix some of your boot looping uh, Nexus products. We'll catch you guys in the next one. Root Junkie out.